butterflies. Beautiful, delicate creatures. The essence of summer. But how do they survive through the cold winter months when food is scarce? Most people think that butterflies just die off in the winter and will catch out again from, from their pupa in, in the spring. But actually, there's a whole range of strategies that butterflies have. Some go through as eggs, some go through as caterpillars, some go through as pupae, and, and some go through as adults. Malcolm discovered that an old brick extension was a sanctuary for overwintering butterflies, enabling him to make some remarkable discoveries. I've been living in St Albans for 25 years in this house and probably fairly early on I was aware of the old butterfly uh, overwintering in the shed. Butterflies will think very carefully about where to settle. It's a life or death decision for them. If they get it wrong, if they go in the wrong place, that could be it. Two of the British species that overwinter as adults are the familiar and much loved small tortoise shell and the peacock. The small tortoise shells they love being on the underside of the roof. The peacocks particularly like being on the underside of the shelves. They hide away in the darkest places where they're least likely to be seen. But Malcolm did more than just welcome his butterflies. He had so many each year that he decided to study their arrival and departure. Putting that data into Butterfly Conservation's yearly Big Butterfly Count. It wasn't until the last three or four years that I really started recording them on a regular weekly basis. The reason that I started monitoring them was that the results we were getting from the public through the Big Butterfly Count was showing that the number of small tortoiseshells and peacocks were declining considerably. And there was a lot of concern, why is this? By monitoring week by week, I've been able to see exactly when they do go into hibernation, how that varies between different years. Malcolm's diligence is paying off and his research seems to be revealing previously unknown trends. Two years ago when I was recording the small tortoise shells, the first one actually went in in the last week of June and then there was a sudden rush in the first week of July, you know, which is astonishing for things going into hibernation that early. The books all say they go into hibernation at the end of the summer. That year they were all in hibernation at the start of the summer. Who expects things to go into hibernation then? The big bus fly count always takes place at the end of July and early August. By that time, every year, I'm finding that some of the small tortoise shells have gone into hibernation. So clearly that will have had an impact on the number of bus flies recorded on the count. The more data we can get, the better. Winter's a great time to go and look and see if you've got a population of hibernating butterflies. We like everybody to record the butterflies they've seen and send the information into butterfly conservation. I suppose I feel a sense of stewardship. I like to, to think I'm doing a bit to help all natural creatures. Wildlife is very threatened at present, um, you know, not just in this country but around the world. And you know, I can't sort that out, but at least I can do my bit to help the animals that live close by. <laughs> <laughs>